Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are still tracking Invest 94 and 95L in the Atlantic and Caribbean. Could 95L become our first hurricane of the season? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Thursday, June 27, 2024. The purple arrow is Invest 94L in the Western Caribbean. The black arrow is 95L in the middle of the main development region. And right behind it is another tropical wave in, perp in pink. Here's the vorticity signature of our three tropical waves. You can see 94 and 95L are, are well defined. The one behind it, not so much. So that's why we're gonna focus on those other twos. Here's a close-up view of Infest 94L in the Western Caribbean, just to the east of Honduras and Nicaragua, bringing some rain showers to this region. Not organized in tro tropical storm or depression just yet. You can see it's going to be moving in a northwest direction over the next few days across the Gulf of Honduras, across the Yucatan Peninsula, and into the Gulf of Mexico by day three, and making landfall around day four with Mexico where Tropical Storm Alberto made landfall, and also we saw Invest 93L. Model intensity guidance shows because this is going to stay over water a little bit longer now, we do have this slightly higher chance of seeing development into a tropical storm uh, when it's in the Gulf of uh, Honduras first, and then after crossing the Yucatan when we're in the Gulf of Mexico before making landfall. So it's got a 10% chance of doing the uh, tropical storm development in the Gulf of Honduras in the next two days and 30% chance in the Gulf of Mexico over the next seven days. Here's a close-up view of 95L, a lot better organized compared to 94L. Uh, we do see a little bit of a spin in this satellite image, but we don't have a closed low yet near the surface as you can see here on the latest ASCAN scan. Now this storm Looks to go right through the Caribbean islands. Uh, so Trinidad and Tobago, Leeward Islands, even up towards uh, Hispaniola and Jamaica, you need to be on the lookout for this storm because potentially we could see the first hurricane of the season. Even the first major hurricane is a possibility and I'm gonna show you why. As you can see here on the model intensity guidance. So it's got a 60% chance of developing into a tropical storm over the next two days and 80% over the next eight, uh, seven days. So let's look at the models and see how this could all play out. Again, this is the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere a thousand feet up from the surface. Purple is 94L, black is 95L, and pink is the tropical wave behind it. Here's the upper level of the atmosphere showing an upper level ridge over both of our tropical waves, purple and black. That's gonna create low wind shear environments and that's gonna allow for the moisture to stay wrapped around these low pressure systems, especially with 95L because we have the Saharan air layer just to its north. So that low wind shear environment will allow this storm to really ingest that dry air hampering development. So it's gonna enhance development. As you can see here, in two days' time, we see 95L looking like a tropical storm at that point already. It's got a 997 millibar low pressure system still underneath an upper level ridge. Purple 94L is over the Yucatan, so we're not expecting development while over land. And it didn't develop in the Gulf of Honduras on this model run. Uh, but we still have those light wind shear environments, and you can see that's protecting 95L in the middle of the main development region from that dry air to its north. Three days from now, on Sunday, June 30th, we have 94L in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially with a broad area of circulation right there, as you can see. So it's got a small chance for it becoming a tropical storm right there before making landfall on the next day with Mexico. But look at 95L, that is looking like a very strong, tight piece of vorticity. Now it's down to a 988 millibar low pressure system. Day four, it's knocking on the door of Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados of the Lesser Antilles Islands. 
down to a 977 millibar low pressure system. We see 94L has made landfall in Mexico at this point on Monday, June, uh, July 1st. Then on Tuesday, July 2nd, day 5, it's already past the Leeward Islands into the Eastern Caribbean in terms of 95L, south of Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. And right behind it, you see that pink tropical wave also trying to develop into a tropical storm as well. We have this 95L down to a 967 millibar low pressure system. That is major hurricane category availability at this point. And right behind it is a 1006 millibar potential tropical storm uh, in the wake of this uh, potential major hurricane in the eastern Gulf and eastern Caribbean. Why could it get to this strength? Well, we have very above average sea surface temperatures in the Caribbean and main development region. Those temperatures are 28, 29, even 30 degrees Celsius, which is approaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit in pockets in the Caribbean. But it's not just what's at the surface, it goes in depth. And you can see we have a lot of warm water going down 75, 100 meters down into the depths of the ocean. And that creates a lot of energy heat content in the in the uh, ocean for these storms to pick up on but it's not just about the ocean temperatures you need to have it linked perfectly with the atmosphere as well and you have that you have this upper level ridge over the storm in still in five days time that creates a very low wind shear environment protecting it's a moisture bubble now around this saharan air layer and with those two combined, the ocean heat content and this upper level ridge with low wind shear environment, you have the maximum potential uh, being unleashed potentially in this region. We could, this area with the right conditions can support a major hurricane, category four, even up to a category five in the Eastern Caribbean. I don't think it'll get that strong, uh, but because it's so early in the season, but Major Hurricane Category 3 is still a possibility. Then we see by the time we get to Wednesday, July 3rd, it starts to decrease in strength at this point. It's losing a little bit of its uh, punch, but it's still a strong storm in a 988 millibar low pressure system just to the south of Haiti and Dominican Republic. And then when we get to day 7 by next week on the 4th of July, it is on knocking on the door and crossing over portions of Jamaica potentially with the tropical storm right behind it potentially with the other tropical wave in pink. What's the European model showing? Well, you can see it's showing pretty much the same thing as the GFS. We have a strong storm coming in. Both the We see all three of them actually develop at one point. We see that 95L doesn't look as intense on the European model as we saw on the GFS, but it's still a very strong tropical storm, maybe a low end category one hurricane on this model run. So like I said, there's a chance we still see at least the potential of a hurricane developing top end, maybe a category three comes through the Eastern Caribbean before it starts to weaken. So we need to keep an eye on all three of these tropical waves for potential impacts in the Caribbean. The biggest threat at the moment would be the black hexagon, which is 95L, potentially becoming a hurricane and even a major hurricane. So 94L the, is the biggest threat immediately in terms of land impacts right now, but it would be a smaller, more rain impact, not so much wind or or storm surge impact from this storm, either with Belize or Mexico. 95L and the tropical wave behind it are also on the table for development into a tropical storm. 95L into a potential hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane. So the Caribbean has to start preparing for those possibilities now while you have the time. It's five days away from making landfall somewhere in the Lesser Antilles Islands and then six days and seven days from Hispaniola and potentially Jamaica. Will this make it to the United States? Still too far out to tell, but right now, based on the position of the 
Bermuda Azores high and high pressure over the southeast United States. It looks to keep this south of the United States at the moment, but anything is possible seven plus days from now. So we're not even going to concern ourselves with the United States. The Caribbean, it will be our focus. If the next storm to develop would be Barrel, if all three were to develop, we would have Barrel, Chris, and Debbie by the time we get to next week. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.